Chris Rager. How are you this afternoon? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. And welcome to RivalCon. Uh, you've got a few fans sitting out here in the audience just waiting to say hello to you. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That's exciting. <laughs> All right. So uh, Chris, Chris Rager is not someone I, I necessarily need to introduce to the RCM crowd, but for formality's sake, um, Chris, you're very well known in the RCM universe. Uh, your voice has given life to various characters throughout uh, the Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z series. Um, you are Mr. Torg in, in Borderlands 2. Uh, a lot of Borderlands fans in this room right now. <laughs> And, uh, right I mean, you, you've, you've appeared in a number of, of other video games, uh, the, one of the more recent ones being Bacchus in the Smite games, which is also a very popular thing. Very cool. No, that is very, very one of popular. One of our, one of our streamers is, like, freaking out right now because he forgot about that, and he's, he's, he's a, he's a huge fan. So, uh, again, well, I, welcome. I just play, I just play a drunk fat guy, and that's not very <laughs> challenging. <laughs> D, D feels like a very close connection to you right now, sir. Uh, awesome, awesome. Well, and normally I, I am I am a fat guy, so I'm I'm typically drunk all the time. So it's like, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad he's excited. All right, so I I'm gonna go through um, the the panel questions I sent over for you earlier, um, just to kind of give a little structure, because I, I think you know the the rival panelists you know want to want to know a little bit more about the behind the scenes Chris Rager. Um, so when you were a kid, I mean you you you're obviously a very successful voice actor now, but when you were a kid, uh, what did you dream of being when you grew up? Um. I, I guess I was probably, I thought I was going to be an artist of some kind. Uh, I was very much into art, very much into music. Uh, I played uh, the piano, the string bass. I ended up playing the bassoon, became a bassoon player in the Dallas Junior Symphony and the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra. So I was always really being pumped and primed, full of very creative things to do. <clears throat> uh, so I knew it was going to be creative. Uh, by uh, for for sure that I was going to do something creative. I didn't really pinpoint it until I was probably nineteen, eighteen, nineteen years old when I decided to be an actor. So, so what what made the was there something specific that made you want to make that jump or? Uh, yeah, <laughs> honestly, it was a little odd. Uh, I was going to junior college, uh, and I was paying for my own courses at the time uh they weren't too expensive but i would budget out my money exactly with what i needed each semester so i knew how much to my classes were going to be well i didn't factor in one semester 16 dollars that was going to be applied for a lab fee for my drawing class oh gosh and so i decided to take an acting class instead since there was no lab fee and well i never i never went back to drawing Wow. So that's basically it. It was six, 16 bucks changed my life. <laughs> so and and it, it it turned out to be a very uh a very lucrative uh choice for you as well. I mean that $16 led to a career that, you know, spanned television. Um you know, you've done a number of video games as we talked about before. Um, of the various roles that you've played over the years, uh, you know, which has been the most fun for you as an actor and which role are you most proud of? Uh, I had to say they're all fun. Um, I, I never have a bad time when I'm getting to perform in any capacity. So they're all fun. Um, uh, lately I have been enjoying playing these more evil, sinister uh sort of smooth talking bad guys uh like principal principal asano in assassination classroom um recently i was uh although i did yell a little bit but i was uh uh ren dane uh, lothar ren dane in overwatch which probably or is not overwatch battleborn see that's what it was is all of you were playing overwatch and i was thinking about it, instead of playing battleborn uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, please go play Battleborn. It's really fun. Stop playing Overwatch. Anyway. Uh, 
Uh, it's a completely different game. It's a totally different experience. Anyway, uh, so yeah, but uh, I'd say you know, near and dear to my heart is Hercule, Mister Satan, and uh, um, it, it's been seventeen years now that I've been playing that character, and it never seems to end. And I always enjoy uh, a phone call that I get to go in and be Mister Satan again because. Uh, I mean, I would walk around talking like that in my every everyday life, except I would embarrass my daughter all the time. So. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So, you know, part of being an actor, really any any entertainer, is you know, you guys do publicity appearances for your work. I mean, you've done a lot of conventions over the years. Um, actually, one of the things that I did to prep for this interview is I went through some of the interviews that you did that were recorded and just made sure to not ask all the questions that you've already been asked before. <laughs> so um, that's hard. They, that's hard to do. I know. They, I think they've asked you, them all. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of struggling for a little bit, but I, I was trying to, to revamp a little bit just to make it a little more interesting for you. So hopefully, hopefully I've, I've, I've succeeded, succeeded. But thank you. No, so so, far, so good. So from from the different convention experiences you've had so far, though, um, what's some of the more memorable ones that you've been to, and what what happened at them? Um, I would. What's more, I mean, I, I wish I had some wacky, crazy convention story where this, and really, well, I mean, I'm sure some of those things that happen have happened, but they were usually late at night, and I can't discuss them. Uh, but <laughs> wait. wait. <laughs> You know, you usually was, you know, drinking with the staff and, and, you know, you know, funny things happen. But at the end of the day, I really don't have like a crazy convention story. I, I always have a great time at conventions. I always enjoy meeting the fans. Uh, and I never have like a weird, awkward, crazy moment. I've been waiting on it. I've been going to conventions for, you know, almost a decade now. And, uh, yeah. Someone do something weird, so I have a story. <laughs> okay. What one of our one of our staffers, uh, D to D, who who wants you to know that we are our next rival con next year will be in Cleveland. Uh, we don't have a date yet, but you are definitely invited. Uh, but he's 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 saying that if you want to come, he will definitely give you a crazy convention moment. So, so All right, think well, of something. If that if that convention moment is that I get to meet and hang out with like LeBron James or something, I'm in. <laughs> we'll work on it. I just want I just want to hang out with LeBron for the day. That'd be cool. <laughs> we we will work on that. Him and I can tie together over his victory. That works. All right, so a good chunk of RCM's community members are college students or young adults, um, just striking out in the world, you know, just kind of getting their, their grasp on things. So thinking about your experiences thus far, knowing what you know now, you know, having been in the industry for a while, um, what's one thing that you, would, you wish you would have known when you were 20 years old, and what's one piece of advice that you would share with the younger members of the audience? Um, wow, I guess... I guess I wish I would have known or, or been more aware of my own reliability. You know, in this business, show being being there and showing up on time is incredibly important. And I probably had some issues with that early on in my in my younger days. So I would I highly recommend to 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 not have people uh, pin you as uh, someone non reliable. Uh, to always be on time, show up, and be easy to work with. Take take direction well, listen well, uh, be on time, and be easy to work with. I tell you, uh, they will take that over a more talented actor any day of the week. Absolutely, for, for, the, for the most part, unless you're making like million dollar movies, then you'll you'll deal with jackassery, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. So one more one more question for you, and then uh, I have some questions from the audience, and I, I have a feeling that more will be coming in here in a minute. Um, but you know, when it's all said and done, what's you, you've had some very iconic roles so far. What's the one thing that you hope you're most remembered for? You know, when when you do decide to to hang up the the headphones. Uh, 
Well, I hope that is never. I mean, they'll they'll have to, you know, take those headphones off my dead body. Uh, Beautiful. So, uh, I I really hope I I do this as long as I can do this. As long as I can read the scripts and and make voices, then uh, yeah. I want to do this. But, uh, what was the first part of that question? Uh, when what do you want to most be remembered for? Oh, um, gosh. I, I don't know somebody who uh, somebody who had some diversity. I mean, some of my iconic characters uh, are loud and obnoxious, uh, which I enjoy being because I I am myself loud and obnoxious. Uh, my daughter over here is agreeing with me. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but uh, then then I brought some diversity to to my roles, and and that maybe I wasn't just known for the loud obnoxious guy. But at the end of the day, if I am. I'm all for that, too. Fantastic. All right, so I've, I've got some questions coming in from the audience. Uh, the first question, <clears throat> and let me see if I can do this right. Explosions? Yes. Ex yes. <laughs> With the question mark. Yes. <clears throat> if I don't fry out the, uh, the microphone here, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. Would you like to hear one? Absolutely. All right. I believe the line is, and my daughter's looking at me like covering her ears. Excuse me. I believe the line is, uh, I have one question for you. One question only. Explosions. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, great. Because this happens every time I'm doing a broadcast. Our web ninja is uh, sending me a text message right now going, that question was not asked in capital letters. So I didn't do it. Right. I'll try harder next time. That's all right. <laughs> Forgive her. Uh, the next question, uh, what was it like to be part of such an iconic show like Dragon Ball Z? I tell you, early on, uh, I was just happy to be getting uh, paid to work as an actor. Uh, and... When I walked into audition for Dragon Ball Z, I'd never heard of Dragon Ball Z. I had heard of anime, but when I was growing up, we called it Japanimation. Uh, and so I watched shows like Battle of the Planets, uh, Star Blazers, which is Star Battleship Yamoto. Are you still there? I I'm still here. All right. Uh, so... Uh, you know, I mean, I was aware of anime. I watched Robotech and Voltron and, you know, uh, a lot of these shows growing up. Uh, and so when I when I saw the style of animation, I knew what it was. I was like, oh, this is Japanimation. OK, I see what's going on here. There we're redubbing this, you know, because I, I just I didn't know what what I was getting into at the time. And. Uh, so, I mean, it really after it was only. I guess after probably four, five, six, seven months, Score Entertainment was creating a card game series and also a trading card series. Uh, and they hired some of the voice actors to come in and help promote it and sign some autographs and stuff. And, you know, someone, they were paying me to sign my name on these cards. And I was just like, that's crazy. This is insane. Why, why do people want my autograph? Uh, because of this show. And so then it kind of began to dawn on me, like, okay, this is, this is, there's something here. This is bigger than I ever imagined or thought. And, you know, then uh, you begin to see some of the factors. I think back in, back when Lycos was still a usable search engine, <laughs> uh, they, uh, I believe the number back in 19, or sorry, back in 2001, 2001, the top three things searched on the Lyco search engine were Britney Spears, uh, the World Trade Center, and Dragon Ball Z. And uh, so, I, you know, it, it began to hit home, like, oh, I'm I'm kind of a part of something really big and cool here. And uh, it's quite an honor and a, and a privilege. And, you know, I mean, to know people like Chris Sabat and uh, Sonny Strait and uh, and those guys who are really great and terrific and have been friends of mine for, for years now. Uh, and to kind of know the effect that they have on people and, and everything else, and just to kind of know them as these these guys that we just, you know, we're making this this cartoon and 
uh, and it was just a thing we did. We were doing, you know, we were getting paid to be actors, and to have it now, these this many years later, be as big and as popular, and to uh, have people to bring you to conventions so that you can talk to people and sign your name and and these kinds of things is is uh, it's wild, crazy, and awesome, and I love every minute of it. And and we love the fact that you. Uh, you know, and your friends come out and talk to us, you know, at these conventions too, because it, it, it like you said, it, it really does make a huge impact that you don't really think about when you're creating it. But when you see the after effects of that and you see how the stories touch people and how your performances touch people, I mean, that, that makes a pretty big impact. I mean, you, you're influencing how people see themselves. It, it influences some of the things that they're interested in and, and gives them ideas of you know what they want to do it sets in a lot of cases it sets their courses for what they do when they grow up so it's a, it's a pretty amazing feeling amazing when, when well you and you know that. i really I, I really take that as an honor when i go to these conventions and that you know that i, I want to one want to be as real as i can possibly be but two also uh accessible to the fans you know uh somebody who's uh, gets who involves themselves in the convention. You know, I don't, I don't like to go hang out in my hotel room. I, you know, there's a bunch of weird, wild, crazy, fun people running around in costumes and stuff. I want to watch <laughs> it all take place. Uh, so I, I get very much involved and I, I think they appreciate it. And I appreciate them for it because I literally have never, ever, ever had a bad experience at a convention. Never. That's fantastic. That's all right. Uh, next question. Uh, so, how much of Mr. Torg's dialogue was scripted? All of it. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people do think it was improvised uh, that I was shooting from the hip on some of this. But Anthony Birch is such an excellent writer that that that's kind of how he wrote. He wrote. It was just easy for it to come out like like I was saying it for the first time. And to be honest. Because of the character I was playing, and because of the strain that it put on my voice, we were uh, we were taking special care. So I would uh, uh, I would glance over the line really quickly, but I too wanted it to sound fresh and new. So I never really read the line until I actually recorded it. Um, so I was you know so some of that what feels like improv is because I'm literally saying it for the first time. So I get to play with it in that moment uh and the writing was so good it was it was done so well i just understood the the comedy of it the timing of it that it just it was just easy it just came out that way and we literally we'd do a line and we'd all laugh you know and then we'd do another line and we'd all laugh again you know and then to every once in a while they would i would hear a little pause and then somebody would come to my headphones and say uh chris look man we're really really sorry but could you do that line again and again? We're really, really sorry for making you do it again. Because, I mean, I was screaming, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and uh, after a while, eventually, they stopped apologizing. We're like, just again, again. They didn't feel bad for me anymore after a few seconds. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think a lot of that had to do with the writing and uh, the way in which we recorded it was was – because I did, we didn't have a lot of time to do this, and we did have to get through it. And I did have uh, a voice that was uh, difficult to be doing for long periods of time. That it just sort of came across like that. So I'm glad that you felt that way, because uh, when I picked up the game for the first time, I'm a big gamer, and uh, I had played the first Borderlands, and I was happy to be in the second one. And when I first played my DLC. And heard my voice, and I didn't really remember every line I recorded. I was like, "Man, this is awesome! I'm really funny in this <laughs> game. This is great." So, I, as a fan of video games, as a fan of video games, sort of taking that step out and saying, "Okay, looking at the character as it fits in this game," I thought, "Wow, that really go, goes over well. It's really funny. The lines are funny. Anthony Birch uh, wrote a very, very funny video game, and..." Uh, I'm just crossing my fingers that they somehow bring him back to write the third one. So, 
I am keeping my fingers crossed too because uh, you know I I watch video games more than I play them. But Borderlands is one of those ones that I started watching other people play early on just because the writing was that good and that funny. And there are, uh, the uh, the rival con fans know that I write uh, fiction about the staff here. Um, so, so various things like video, various video game jokes and things that we that really resonate with us end up making it into uh, the scripts. And so there are a few Mr. Torg lines that are coming up in the, the third story that I'm rather impressed with. Just because just nice. they were just done so well. And, you know, so... Uh, we do have one last question from the audience. Um, sure. How do you like playing your crazy and eccentric characters? Uh... Well, I guess lately I, I haven't been, I, I don't really play Smite, so I haven't played that one. And then the other characters, like Tori's not a playable character, uh, Lothar Rindane is not a playable character, although I'm crossing my fingers that the DLC, they bring him in as a playable character, which I think would be fun. Um, so, uh, but as far as like playing the games that I'm in, and being a gamer who's a fan of video games, uh, I just want to say again, over uh, Battleborn is a really fun video game. Go play it. We, uh, <laughs> we have a few staffers that are obsessed with it at the moment, too. So, yeah. Well, good. Good. And I, hey, look, at the end of the day, I really like Overwatch, too. I think it's a great game. And if you were to, my quick review would be, uh, you know, Overwatch is fun to kind of drop in, get a quick game in and pop out, you know. Uh, Battleborn's got a little more in depth, a little more of a build to it, and stuff like that. So you you have and you have some of those MMO qualities that uh, people like. So uh, anyway, that's my review. They're both really fun. They're just different. Stop comparing them, please. All right, then I, I just just over the course of our conversation, so I have a, con a question for you too. Um, you play tons of video games. What's your favorite game of all time ever? Uh, this is probably not going to go over well with uh, a group of anime fans, but, uh, uh, I also, on top of being a gamer and a fan of many nerdy things, I'm also a sports fan and I've been playing, uh, Madden since the inception of Madden. Uh, and, uh, I do very well. I'm actually, I'm actually ranked in the top 3% of Madden players online. And uh, nice. so I would have to say it's Madden. Uh, but as far as a game that's not Madden, gosh, my favorite video game. Uh, I'm a little addicted to Rocket League right now. Yes! And uh, gosh, this last Fallout game was so awesome. I don't know. I really don't think I can pin it to one. It's sort of like the game I'm playing at the time. I just finished Fallout. I did it. I went through many different factions. I played it three different ways. And then I found out there's a way that you can actually get everyone to end up getting along in the end. And I was like, damn it. Now I'm going to go play it one more time just so <laughs> I can figure out how to do that. But uh, I'm not a big builder in Fallout. I, 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 I like to do some of that. But uh, um, yeah, just figuring out the, the different, uh, how you play the different factions against each other or with each other. Uh, really great game. So, uh, and then currently, gosh, I'm trying to think of some other, uh, I don't know, my daughter and I play Super Meat Boy a lot. Uh, we, uh, she loves Minecraft, which I delve into every once in a while. And uh, that's about it. You know, I'm an old school gamer, though, too. I mean, I literally played Pong when it came out. That's how old I am. <laughs> and, uh, you know, everything after that, Atari, uh, Intellivision, ColecoVision, uh, Neo Geo, Sony, Genesis, you know, I've played them all. I've played them all. And the, people think that the GameCube was good, but it sucked. <laughs> <clears throat> As an older gamer... The games did not appeal to me, but I know there are some people who like the GameCube was awesome. No, you're just wrong. <laughs> so, and you're laughing because you know that person. You, you, you're <laughs> like, I know, I know, I have a friend who like still plays the GameCube, and well, they don't have any other friends than you, and that's the no, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 Thank you.
Uh, all right. So, did we have any other questions from the audience? Well, we have. We're good. All right. All right. Come on, guys. One more. Uh, what do you got? Me. Uh, <laughs> Whoever. <laughs> all right. Bob's has a question for you. Go, go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. Hello, sir. Hello. I'm actually curious. Wait, hold How on. What's, you what's like your name? Working on wait, wait, stop. stop oh, oh, hold on a second. What's your name? Oh, sorry. Hi. This sorry. is Bob's. I'm Bob's. What? Bob's? Is there um, one how did you like working on Borderlands itself? <laughs> hold on, Bob. Bob. He said, why, why does your name have an S? <laughs> actually, it's, 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 it's actually a Z, technically, but... <laughs> <laughs> so you just made that name up? Yeah, I absolutely did. I absolutely did. No I, I actually you, got it no from a friend of mine. It was hilarious. <laughs> no one gave you the nickname Bob's? <laughs> Bob, okay, this is a nickname that you gave yourself? No, no, no. My best friend called me that since I we were like kids. Okay. You just try to call me Bob's mate. I'll let it go. Yeah, that that's <laughs> that that's the origin of that. And it's, just, it's some, easier than my actual name game name. So. Yourself, and you'd be like, I'm gonna call myself Bob's. I would we would have to go to a new place. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, so, <laughs> so that's not how it went down. Okay, okay. So the question is, how did you like working on Borderlands itself? Like with the I, director and everything else, like how did how did you like that? I loved it. Uh, I mean, uh, the director technically was Anthony Birch. Uh, I mean, we had like Sabbath there some days, Eric Vale there some other days, uh, assisting with the directing. But really, ultimately, it was Anthony Birch. And like I said, he's just a really funny, cool writer guy. He's you know kind of a I don't know if you 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 probably seen, anybody watch Hey Ash what you're playing? Yeah, we got the some one? yes in the audience here. Oh yeah. Okay, good. Well, then you probably seen Anthony Birch. He's in all of those Hey Ash what you're playing's, and uh, he is that just kind of quirky, quick-witted guy, and he was just a, a blast to work with. And I, I truly hope I get to work with him some more. If any of you have haven't seen on Hulu. Uh, uh, those rocket jumps, uh, him and his sister helped write and direct some of those episodes. Uh, Ashley Birch played Tiny Tina. I recommend checking those out. Those were a lot of fun. And, uh, but yeah, the overall experience and the people that I met and, uh, uh, and the fact that I, you know, sort of, uh, uh, uh cemented a, a, a place at Gearbox, I think with all future video games for them. Uh, is a kind of a good place to be. So the the fact that I, I feel like I have a future with, with Gearbox and their continued success with their video games and the people that I met and everything else, it was just, it was overall a great experience. And to turn around and have it sell 28 million copies and, and to be, you know, a, a, a known popular character on that game was just, as a gamer, as a nerd, like, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, Hax has joined us in chat to ask you a couple of questions too, and then I've got more people are coming up to the table to, to ask a few things. All right, cool. <clears throat> so, what would you say to our leader, Variar, who is a disgusting laser weapon sympathizer? <laughs> oh, God. The death uh, stares right now are amazing. I, just saying. I, would, I, think, I think we all know how Torg feels about laser weapons. Uh... And I honestly, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the line exactly what he said. Uh, all that's coming to me in my head right now when it comes to the pre-sequel is that uh, uh, I changed my mind. Uh, you can now call it a butt slam. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, la laser weapons are for losers. All right, uh, D, you want to come over and ask a question? Yes. <laughs> D, D's one of your biggest fans in this room, so he's very excited here. 
D, D. Hi, I'm, I'm D to D. I'm the super fan. Yes, I gave myself that stupid idiotic nickname, so go ahead and laugh. It's fine. Well, what, is, what is this name? Wait, what is the name again? D to D. I am not a smart man. <laughs> D to D. It's like, you know, D to D. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes, that's exactly what I do. Exactly, yeah. I sing it, and it just makes it better. Closer? Okay, so my first well, question on, is... D uh, We're not done with your name. Oh. <laughs> uh, so you you gave yourself this name? Did you give yourself this name? Yes, yes I did. Yes, I I'm did. not a smart man. And the story and the story behind the reason you gave yourself this name. Uh well <laughs> Um we were playing World of Warcraft and I uh wanted to name uh I was making an orc warrior. And I wanted the name to sound really stupid, so I named him D2D, and then I became known as D2D, even though I didn't want to be. <laughs> but now that's what everybody calls me, so, yeah. So. Okay, well, that's good. So, again, you didn't really give yourself this name. Yeah. You named a World of Warcraft character this name, and then now your friends just call, it, call you that because it's so terribly awful. Yeah, it, it, it's fine until my kids start referring to me as D D, and then they know I'm stupid, and they can lord over me. Uh, I, I, have you tried beating them? <laughs> Many times, but they outnumber me. Oh, man. <laughs> then then D D, stop, stop having kids. <laughs> How many kids I've do you have? I've learned that lesson. How many kids do you have? I've stopped practicing, so we can't have misfires. I'm fine how many, now. How, how many how kids do you, do you have? I have four. Good God. Two 15-year-olds, an 11-year-old, and a 10-year-old. How old are you? I'm 35. What, have, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like I said, I'm not a smart man. Okay, now, Deacon D, what? What's your question? What's your oh, question? Oh, so my first question is uh, voicing Bacchus' as smite, which is actually one of my main gods, and I'm super psyched about it. Um, <laughs> did they make you voice any of the, the skin packs, specifically the Brunhildar uh, opera singing fat lady skin pack? For Bacchus? Yeah. Yeah, they always bring in other voice actors for all the other skin packs. So typically, if you do this voice on one skin pack, you're not going to be the voice on another skin pack. Uh, but I, do, I, I just really I, uh, wanted to hear you sing opera is all. Oh, uh, I do play a couple of other characters on that on Smite, though, as well. Um, one's a big rock dude. Geb? Oh my god, this is another main. <laughs> and then, honestly, the third one I think If you is say the next is Kabrakin, I'm the, just going to find you and hug you. The other character I play is in High Res's new game, Chaos, which is coming out. Oh. <laughs> and it's a lot like Smite, I assume. So I have another question, not Smite related. Yes. Okay, so in a super fight, <laughs> would Mr. Torg's explosions or Hercule Satan's uh, inability to somehow win all the time, who would win? Uh, I want to say first that Hercule, uh, Mr. Satan, I prefer, uh, yeah. wins, wins all the time. He does. Uh, it's amazing. In fact, uh, if you really want to track his history, he has actually saved the world three different times. That's fact, um, yeah. Rule, rule, time number one was that he moved Android 16's head so Gohan could defeat Cell. Fact. Uh, the second time, he had all of pe Earth's people give their energy to Goku's spirit bomb to defeat Boo. Remember, I was there. I was there. And then, <laughs> in, in, battle, in Battle of the Gods, uh, ipso facto, me fathering Videl, who fathered Pan, who made the fifth Saiyan in the cycle. I, this is a spoiler, by the way, if you haven't seen Battle of the Gods. Oh, don't worry. I've memorized it already. Well, just not for anyone else. Uh, he, Pan completes the 
uh, the sequence needed for a fifth Saiyan to defeat Beerus. Yeah. And uh, and then apparently in Super, uh, I do I do it again. So now it's four times. Are you excited to be doing any work on Dragon Ball Super? And have have they talked to you about that yet? Yet. <laughs> I may I may have gotten a phone call to come in and record. Man, I can't wait. <laughs> okay. That's all the questions. Well, the, thing is, the thing is, is you are going to have to wait because what we're recording now is only for English speaking Southeastern Asia countries. Uh, Toonami in America hasn't bought the licensing yet. Moving. <laughs> or bootlegging, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just uh, wanted, I just to, wanted thank to thank you very much for your time. Like I said, I'm a I'm huge, huge fan, fan and, and I appreciate you being here. here. Hey, it's my pleasure, man. It's very good to meet you. Dick a dee. You said my name. I'm going home. I'm done. Thank you You just made his day. Right on. Oh, there, oh, there's there's one more written question here. Um, have, what now? All right, so we we have one more question. Uh, this is from Dora. Hi there, my name is Andora. Uh, I just had a question Dora? about. Uh, Yes, like like the witch. Yes. Yes, I was named after her, actually. Oh, I, you could be like Endora the Explorer. <laughs> I also get that a lot. The funny thing is, I'm actually going to school for wildlife biology. So. How about that? <laughs> I really am Dora the Explorer. I like it. <laughs> well, my question is about your voice acting, since uh, you scream a lot. Um, my background is in singing, so I know a lot about um, uh, the dangers of stressing your voice out a lot. So my, my, uh, just my curiosity is, have you ever gotten notes from all the screaming during your uh, voice acting, and, and what do you do to take care of your voice? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be surprised. Uh, I have never gotten notes, and I've known plenty of actors who have. Um, so I, I guess in some way I'm lucky. I feel, uh, because, um, doing tour really does stress. It doesn't stress out my voice. It stresses me out. Um, <laughs> because the strain really comes from the physicalization of the character. Uh, and what you probably can't see when I'm doing the character is the intensity at which my body is, is, tensed and flailing in a way you know it's um the tension in his voice comes a lot more from my physical body than it does my voice does that make sense yes my fifth grade teacher was like that she was a nun wow <laughs> she, she was she was already uptight <laughs> uh, quite so she was also italian so she liked to talk with her hands oh goodness no parlo italiano. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, so I would say, as far as like taking care of your voice, every actor has their own unique way of doing that, whether it's some tea and some honey. Uh, I know Greg Ayers has this story of this concoction that he would have to tell you who makes it for him or who made it for him in the beginning, but. Apparently, it gives him gas, but it helps with his voice. He calls it heart juice. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> for myself, I don't know. I, I think there's uh, some natural ability at re recuperating for, for myself. And, and like I said, I, what sounds like a lot of stress on my voice uh, comes from uh, more of the physical aspect than it does my tension in my vocal cords uh that being said uh, a voice like mine in a non-union job uh pays a certain amount uh <laughs> in, a, in a union job uh it would pay a lot more because doing a voice like that would be considered hazard pay uh and i would probably get paid four times that 
Uh, I did not, because in Texas, it is a right-to-work state. Uh, so it was a technically a non-union gig. Uh, I still got paid union scale, but I didn't get union benefits, which would have been one of these, which would have been hazard pay for putting that stress on my voice. Right. But maybe, maybe battle, maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh, Borderlands Three, they'll pay me more. You deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> What was All that? Right. No. They, oh, they're they're excited about uh. They they think. Yeah, they they say they say you deserve more pay for Borderlands Three, and they're excited well, about the. There was a recent semi strike in of the L A voice actors, uh, to get residuals because they get you get residuals on uh, animation, you know, uh, not not anime, especially non union, but in L A you do union work on an animation, you get residuals. Well, they were looking to get residuals off of video game sales based on sales of the video game. So if things all kind of go to plan, there will be a bump in money uh, every two million copies that video game sells. Um, so hopefully that, that will all kind of um, go into effect and begin to trickle down to us non-union people. That would be nice. All right. I think uh, I think that's all the questions we have for you, Chris. So again, thank you so much for stopping by and uh, you know talking with us for a little bit this afternoon. I, I know we very much appreciate it, and uh, I, I'm seeing a lot of smiles around this room right now. So <laughs> definitely had had some good time. And I'll let you know when RivalCon is next year. You know, if you want to stop by Cleveland, you're more than welcome to hang out with us. I uh, I would love to. I've only been to Cleveland one other time in my life, and. Uh... I was there with Damian Clark, of all people, who played Cell and played uh, Handsome Jack in, in uh, Borderlands. Um, so it's been many, many years since I've been back to Cleveland. I would love to. I, I just saw a grown man swoon for the first time in my life, and this is a beautiful <laughs> thing when you start saying that. So. <laughs> well, again, thank you very much, Chris. And... Uh, from all of us here at Rivalcast Media, thank you very much, and and uh, you know we look forward to to speaking with you again. Well, I... I would like to say thank you, guys. It was my pleasure, uh, Rivalcon, and uh, all the people involved. You guys are great, and uh, hopefully, we'll see more of each other in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure, guys. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.